Boom! What's going on, everybody? I am Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk. Product reviews are what it's all about today, and I've got a review of the latest International Fleet Star by Neo Scale Models in 164 scale. Thursday, I've got another new video coming out on a group of highly specialized off-road vehicles, and I'm sure you won't want to miss it. So go on and hit that red subscribe button and ring the bell next to it in order to get notified of all of my future videos. The International Fleet Star family of trucks was touted as the finest family of all. They were available as A variants, which were equipped with all international diesel or gasoline power. These A variants were available in seven different models with gross combined weight rating up to 54,000 pounds. The A's also had a choice of either a steel butterfly hood or B, a fiberglass tilt hood. The Neo 64 scale version that I'm going to talk about today is a D variant. The D's were all diesels and were big power displacement engines in either single or tandem axle configurations. There were only two models to choose from in the D variants and both had the same 92 inch bumper to back of cab conventional cab design. The power was one of six different Cummins or Detroit diesel engines that you could choose from. And these engines gave this vehicle a gross combined weight rating up to 79,000 pounds for those heavy highway applications. This is the Neo Scale Models 164 Scale International Fleet Star F2000D. It is a 1963 model year and it is painted in black with silver roof on it. Another neat feature of this release is the fact it has a sleeper making this the first one of the Fleet Stars to have a sleeper box behind the cab. It's got that small bunk back there, which basically you can just sleep in, but it's better than sleeping behind the wheel. It comes in a display case with a hardboard sleeve around it. Also, it's got that little mirrored piece behind it, so you can pretty much see the back of the truck in the display case. When you have the hardboard there, you can see both sides of the truck. Now, to take them out, just slide this hardboard board off, which is no problem. And then, doesn't that look nice? You can really see that bottle in that display case. That clear plastic lid will protect it very well from the elements, and it will keep the dust off, making dusting your collection very easy to do. To take this guy off of the base plate, it's just two Phillips head screws underneath that's holding it down. However, when you're doing this, please make sure you hold between the frame and the base plate. Neo scale models solved the problem of the fragility of the original 64 scale trucks that were made in resin because they decided to use a die cast frame instead of the junky resin frame that the other manufacturer used. So these come out to be a very good, very sturdy model that will really enhance your collection, especially with the limited nature of them. They only make a couple of thousand max of any tooling. Now to take it off, it's just these two little screws underneath and you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, a small Phillips head screwdriver for these guys. And then you can just pick him right up off of that base plate. No problems. Another little feature that Neo does is they actually put on each of these base plates, they write out the model number and the year the truck was made. That way you can keep good track of what they are. Now let's pick him up and actually do some real looking at it up close. This particular one has probably more photo etched parts than most of their 64 scale trucks. Individual photo etched windshield wipers, which are very fragile and easy to flick off. It's also got on the hood, the international 
badge, the Fleet Star badge, the 2000 badge, and that little grill, which are um, photo etched parts on this truck. Also, the front grill on this guy is a photo etched part. Up on top of the hood, it's got the uh, pull handle, which denotes that this is the tilt hood version, which is the fiberglass tilt hood instead of a butterfly hood. It's got door handles, grab bars, the square style step fuel tanks. It's got mirrors on both sides. It rides on a very, very nice five spoke Dayton wheel with a vintage tread on each wheel. When you turn the guy up like this, we can see the underneath side. It's got the Neo scale models and the model number of the vehicle tampoed on the frame. Underneath, it's also got uh, detailed rear suspension, differentials, drive shafts, uh, modest underneath detail of the engine and transmission, and then it's got nice front axle on it. Turning them down this way, we turn them around to the back, and this truck has a fifth wheel that's set up for DCP first gear vintage trailers with the uh, straight kingpin. It's got a license plate and two brake lights back there. Turn them around to the passenger side. Oh, another note, it's got the airlines and the electrical lines there. Onto the passenger side with this guy. You can see the single exhaust, which has actually been moved back behind the sleeper, which I'm not quite sure why they did that, because it would have been ahead of the sleeper on most of your trucks in this era with a box sleeper, because those were add-on sleepers. They weren't original, and this exhaust would have been forward. But I have seen a Diamond T that was set up this way, so I guess they could have done it on the International. You'll also see very nice graphics on it the cities the company services uh, omaha nebraska up to new haven connecticut it's got the photo etch parts on the side of the hood just like on the driver's side and it's got all of its numbers and requirements painted up on the sleeper back in the day they required a lot of ICC and state numbers and everything else for these trucks to operate with. So they had lots of numbers on them back in the day. Turning them around to the front, you can see that big grill right there. That's the big biggest photo etched part on this truck. I also see one, two other small photo etched parts. The IH uh, right above the grill that's a photo etch part. And so is the little uh, center marker line. And so is the center line that's on the hood. That little marker up in the front so that you know where the center line of your truck is. On that bumper, you can see it's actually got that extra piece that hangs down to help protect the axles a little more. And you can see multiple license plates. Again, back in the day, trucking companies were re registered with multiple license plates for each state the truck operated in. It has individual jewel style headlights with the old seal beam pattern cast into them. And it's got the turn signals mounted onto the fenders. Inside the cab of this guy, you'll see two saddle brown seats, brown door panels, and a black steering wheel and a black dashboard. I know they're very hard to see in an actual model, but they're in there. When you get it, you can actually kind of look in. This video makes, it's just hard to see with the camera. The windows are vacuum formed windows, which is normal for resin models and these very limited. However, I'm, I never discount vacuum formed because they're actually clearer than the hard plastic windows, giving us a better view inside, a less obstructed view. Now, up on the roof, it has the individual international style clearance lights 
and it's got a two bell chime air horn on the top. I've not heard about Crosby Motor Freight Company, but I'm sure it was a real one because every single one of the trucks so far that Neo has done has been based on a real truck that they found somewhere. If you guys know anything about Crosby Motor Freight, just let me know down in the comments below. Now, Neo, they made these trucks in 64 scale and they don't come with trailers. However, thanks to DCP making vintage trailers and top shelf replicas having made vintage trailers We got plenty of trailers to hitch up to these and to show you what it looks like with a trailer I'm gonna go on and hook it up with one of the Wilson livestock trailers that top shelf made Doesn't that look sharp this truck would look great sitting on your layout, pulling one of these old trailers, or it would look great sitting in its display box on your shelves. Wasn't that 64 scale truck neat? Neo made their models with collectability in mind. To go along with this, I've got a free report on tips for valuing your truck collection. So go on and grab your free copy at the link in the description below. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell to get notified of all of my future videos. And also, don't forget to go on and share this video with your friends on your social media. Thanks for watching. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is Toy Talk.